What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Today I'm bringing you a review of the Hyperlite Floss 3.0 Racing Frame. I've actually been flying this pretty much as my standard uh, frame for the last, you know, three, four months. Is I wanted the chance to fly it, to live with it, to fix it, to rebuild it, to have many of them go in my fleet before I share those thoughts with you guys. So this allows me to give you the best kind of opinion that I have, know what it's really like flying these things, what I like, what I don't like, and if I'd recommend that for you. Um, if you haven't heard of the Hyperlite Floss, maybe you haven't heard of racing frames before. So starting with the original Floss, it's really what started a lot of the craze in the lightweight, lightweight racing frames. Um, there were some other ones out there at the time that certainly were very popular, but somehow it was the Floss um, that became its own brand, its own name, where it's just, you knew if you're doing that, you're trying to go for ultra lightweight racing. The first Floss probably got it a little bit you know, too extreme, where a lot of people complained about its durability, they had issues racing it. Uh, and that's really when the Floss 2 came out. And the Floss 2 took the racing scene by storm, at least here in the USA. I remember when I was at International Open and I was competing at the World Cup, um, at the time I was flying a Mode 2 Ghost and I put that down on the line in the finals. So it's me and seven other guys racing the very finals of the World Cup. And I look down that line and there's seven other Floss 2s um, on the line going. So it's clearly been a top performing frame, you know, favorites by many of the top racing pilots in this country, probably across the world. So when the Floss 3.0 was announced, a lot of people were very excited. You know, can this replace the standard Floss 2.1 racing frame? Now. In my personal opinion, let me get straight to it. This is the racing frame to have bar none. I'm sure there's other ones out there that might fit people uh, better, but if you're just starting with, I need a good racing frame for a good price, where should I go? This is probably the first place you should be looking. So the first thing that jumps out to you when you look at this frame is this aluminum plate right here, the orange plate. It just has a standout look. You notice it right away. And I can tell you that when I first saw it, when I first saw it online, my first thought was, why are we adding this plate in the middle of the frame when we're trying to keep these things lightweight for racing? This frame here comes with five millimeter arms, extremely durable five millimeter arms, including this plate and all the other carbon. It still weighs in at only 69 grams, including the included TPU. Um, you might see things get down to 60 grams or slightly below 60 grams when you start removing things like that plate, when you start going from five millimeter arms to four millimeter arms. Um, but at some point in the gram penny pension, you're gonna ask yourself, Am I gaining anything by having a few extra grams or does it make sense to remove those grams? And that's kind of how I look at this one here. I can tell you right away that 
what ends up happening with this frame, because of this middle plate here, because of the way it sandwiches the arms, it's extremely rigid. These frames, these arms, they do not move. They're locked into these grooves inside of this plate right here. So they stay pretty much flush. And then once you uh, screw down into the arms, they don't go anywhere. And even if you try to twist the frame, like in a hard turn, is it gonna twist and move? You cannot budge this frame as long as you keep the arms tight. So every time you're flying it, just give it a little twist, make sure that all the screws are tight. And this thing is locked in there rock solid. And I think that's where a lot of the characteristics of flying this frame come from. And the frame is just so rigid, so stiff, that when you do hard maneuvers, it's gonna be less likely to oscillate, wiggle the arms, have a little bit of bounce back, have those sort of maneuvers which give you a lack of confidence as you're going around the race course, flying at its max. All right, so I've flown this thing uh, outside in the cold, I flew it in, uh, in Champs in Las Vegas, I've been flying it when I was doing my UTT8 trials, I was flying it when I was doing my um, trials for the the multi-GP 2019 qualifier, or rather for my practice of the 2019 qualifier. And this thing is performing great. It's my absolute favorite flying quad that I have. Flies fantastic, keeps it rigid, and there's one thing in particular that I've loved more than anything else, and I'm attributing it to this frame at this point, because as I showed you, this thing is just so stiff, it does not budge as you try to twist it. Any stack that's sitting in here, I feel is more protected than it is with a standard, you know, bottom plate quad without that little bit of a sandwich. So what I mean by that is in a very hard crash, what'll happen is oftentimes the frame is gonna flex and give. And inside that plate on the bottom, you know, if the plate actually bends, those screws that are going through your ESC, they're gonna bend. And when they bend, it's actually gonna crack the ESC. That's gonna cause a short, that's gonna cause a fire. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that last year I lost 14 ESCs, many of them to fires. And I think that one of the reasons why I have not yet had an ESC failure, an ESC fire in the last three or four months is because I've been flying the floss. And even though I've had extremely hard crashes, because the frame does not give, it doesn't put that stress on the ESC and it saves your ESC. So that alone, a frame that's gonna save my components inside of it, it's worth its weight in gold. How much does this frame cost if you're to buy it new? It's $45, all right? At that point, once you get to $45, you start asking yourself, you know, what is there to be gained by saving $20 and buying a clone off, you know, one site or another, you know, slow boat from China? Why not just spend the $45 and get a premium product? So not only are you getting a top of the line racing frame for $45 with five millimeter carbon uh, arms, they actually throw in an extra arm in the package for you. So if you do break an arm, you have one ready to go there. All again, all for $45. So I really like what Powerflip's doing, the Hyperlite brand is doing with this, just making premium products available to so many people at a very low price with very fast shipping out of Powerflip. How do you ask for anything better right there? So I'm really, really happy with the frame, really, really happy with the service I get for Pyroflip. Again, I'm not, you know, paid to do this. I paid for all these with my own money. Nobody asked me to do reviews, anything. This is just my opinion based on me flying this thing. As I talk about this frame, obviously I love flying it. I feel like it goes together very well, has extremely easy um, arm changes. You know, what don't I like about the frame? Let's get those out of the way. So first things first, when you buy it here, these are the pieces of the TPU that you, uh, that you get with it. So in the back, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the way that the, uh, the SMA adapter works or the way the SMA mount works. It puts in a pretty good spot. It's a little bit out of the way, um, but I will say that when I first started flying this thing, I was flying in extremely cold temperatures and just every crash was breaking these. So uh, this is the last one of these that I have. All the other ones are gone on my other builds. Now, the second thing is the front uh, TPU camera mounts. These things are extremely weak. And I've broken all these, even this one here is a little bit broken. They just break in the middle. I'm not a big fan of the included mount. Um, I'd like to see them do something about that going forward. Hopefully a little bit more substantial. I don't care if it adds another gram to the total weight. As long as it's a little bit more durable, holds my uh, quad in a good position, I'll be happy to go. Now, that being said about the TPU, one of the fantastic things about going with the Hyperlite Floss uh, frame is the community support. These things are extremely popular. If you go on Thingiverse, you'll see all sorts of designs, 3D printable materials that you can print and change your design. So you just know that if you have a need for something, if you're looking for an added piece, if you're having an issue with your build, there's such a very large community, you can find support help that you're looking for. 
So if you look at this one here, this is one that I've been flying a bit more. You can see that the camera mount has been swapped out. This is actually using a fixed uh, camera mount that I saw on Thingiverse, downloaded that, printed it out, and then I started using this on all my builds. I like that I know that as I switch from one frame to another, I have the exact same camera angle. It just helps it makes that much easier. If I'm at a race, I destroy one quad, grab the next one, I know I'm gonna have the same view, which is just so critically important, the controls stay the same. The second thing you'll notice here is in the back, I actually have a different mount for the SMA connector. As I said, the standard one that comes with it, I broke them all when it was extremely cold. This one's kind of nice, it's actually designed by Nub, so if you're a DRL fan and you see Nub, he's also contributing to the community, providing um, adapters for the Floss 3.0. So in this one here, it has a spot for my, um, my capacitor to go in the back, has a mount for the SMA here on top, and again, even with this stuff, it adds a little bit of weight. This all up uh, build with props, with my battery strap, comes in at 290 grams. So that's five mil arms, everything you see here, added TPU and still just 290 grams. So very lightweight, even though it comes with extra things like the stability plate, extra things like five mil instead of four mil arms. Just, you know, super impressed with this build here and with this racing frame. All right, so I mentioned I'm not the biggest fan of some of the TPU bits. I hope that they do improve those. Something else which I think could be improved upon a little bit is when you look at this, this bottom plate here. So this is the, blade, the plate that goes on the very bottom of the quad. Most of the screws, at least the screws that I'm using for my stack, they can't actually fit through um, this piece here. Now that's not the case for all of the different screws. So for example, this screw here, it does actually fit through, kind of. Um, and what that means is that after you assemble the quad, for me, my stack screws, I couldn't put them through and I had to disassemble everything, put the stack in on the bottom plate first, and then go back and reassemble the, the frame. Now, that is not really that big of a deal that you have to put the stack in first on this, on this metal plate. But what does kind of get in the way is that when you do build it with this here, if you put through the stack on top, there's actually these little locations here on the on the top plate, which require press nuts to go in them. So if you first come here, you put your whole stack on, then you go to reassemble the frame, well, you can't actually insert the press nut into the frame to attach everything. So there's a little bit of annoyances that you gotta be aware of and you gotta deal with as you're building this frame. They're not big deals, but it is just something that could be a little bit improved maybe. If it was just a little bit wider so I could assemble the whole frame first, then put my stack screws in, I think I'd prefer that. Um, but as it is, all I do is I put the press nut in first. After that, I put the stack on. I actually put the stack on just this plate by itself. Once that's done, I then go ahead and assemble the whole frame around it. Now, the way the assembly process works is when you look at this plate here, the aluminum plate, which again, very, very rigid, extremely strong, you actually slide the, uh, the arms into the slots that are on the plate. So it just slides in there and then you make a sandwich uh, with the plate on the other side. You put the screw through and that's how they connect. Now, I know some other frames that have had these sorts of plates have used uh, pre-drilled aluminum. And so when you screw in, so you just screw directly in there, it, it tightens everything down. That's not the case with the floss. These are smooth holes so that you're not gonna bend the aluminum by over tightening or by crashing and then ruining this aluminum plate. Everything just goes straight through to keep this thing nice and strong. All right, so after you have the whole frame together, um, there's one thing I really wanna talk about that I just love a whole lot, and that's that the screws that come with it, they're actually flat bottom. And when you look at the bottom plate here, they have recessed holes for the screws so that when you put them in, you sit completely flush. And that might not sound like a big deal, but because we're running bottom mount batteries, it's really nice when the screws aren't sticking through the bottom of the frame. You're not getting those depressions in your battery. You're making it less likely you're gonna tear your battery up when you're flying this frame. Again, just all these little details in a very inexpensive frame that helps to save you gear and keeps you from breaking more of your gear, that just makes it worth that much more to me. You know, if I could spend $30 on a frame instead of 45, but I'm spending, you know, $300 in replacement parts, that's not really doing its job for me. I'd much rather spend a few more dollars and have something that keeps good uh, track of my gear. Another little nice touch that comes with it is here, they actually include a battery pad. Now this is not the you know, highest quality battery pad. I do actually wish that they included a slightly better one, but for $45 to include anything, that's a real surprise these days. Now the nice thing too is when you look at it, everything's pre-cut for that bottom plate. When you line it up on the bottom, it takes all the holes and takes them out of it so that when you have a bottom of your quad, 
it sits perfectly flush. You have access to all the same holes and there's a nice little bit of grip here on the bottom to grab your battery. Now, why is this not the nicest battery strap? Well, it only grips it a little bit. So I have had cases where the battery slides out. Personally, what I would prefer is if we had the same sort of material that you get in the Uma Grip, if you could have that on here, that'd be fantastic. Me personally, if the frame costs an extra $5, but I had higher quality TPU and I had a better battery grip, I would be extremely ecstatic. I don't mind paying the five extra dollars if I'm getting something in return for it. Um, that's a slight improvement I'd make, but really the fact that I even include a battery pad, you know, that's just gravy at that point. That's fantastic as it is. Now, another nice feature is that because of this aluminum plate, you actually have this nice little gap built into the frame and that allows it really easy to put your battery straps in here and do your builds. So a lot of people, including myself, are moving to 20 by 20 stacks, which leaves a very small amount of space to put your battery pads in in the traditional frame. But now I have nothing to worry about. It just slides right in, easy to go, extremely easy to work with. So that's been fantastic. So obviously I talked about, I love the way this thing flies, extremely locked in the corners. It doesn't have a lot of give. Those are the things that matter really the most to me. I've talked a little bit about how when you crash it, it really protects your internals. I haven't broken a flight control. I haven't broken anything flying this frame and I've had extreme, extreme crashes. But now let's talk about how does the frame actually do in those crashes itself. So not just how does it protect your components inside, which I think is the most important thing, how does it actually protect itself in those same sort of crashes? What I will say is that there's a handful of things that I have broken on this frame. And again, I've crashed this thing a lot. The number one thing I've broken is the arms. Now, I think what's happening is because a bunch of the arm actually sits between the sandwich of the plate and the bottom plate, you don't actually snap arms very much. This five millimeter carbon is extremely strong. So total across three months of flying this thing, I think I've broken somewhere between six and eight arms, but I've never actually snapped one. All I've ever done is delaminate it where it has to be replaced. And the replacement process is extremely easy. You loosen the middle screw here, you remove the screw that's in that arm, you pull it out, the arm will snap out, take a new arm, you slide it back in, you put the one screw back in, you tighten the middle screw, and you are good to go. That's all there is to change the arm. So extremely, extremely simple, big fan of that process. That's something that you want in a racing frame is ease of changing arms, because you know what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, just six to eight arms. Now, what else is broken on this frame? Well, there's only one other thing that's broken besides the TPU mounts, right, that I mentioned, and that's these aluminum standoffs. So as you hit things hard, like a wall where you hit, you know, these points here and it bends the whole thing back, you have to replace those. But again, those are extremely easy to replace. You, you know, it's a really, really minor de uh, deal. And I think that if you want to run a canopy system where it might protect that a little bit better, there's lots of canopies again, because it's a floss. There's extremely good community support. There's lots of vendors supporting it. You can always find many, many canopy options when you're flying a floss, which again, just makes it fantastic to fly. Along the lines of durability, one thing I wanna talk about is at a recent race, when we were running UTT8 in Detroit, I was racing this in the same heat as somebody else who was racing an X hover van over. And at the time I was full throttle coming down the straightaway in UTT eight. I never saw this other person flying, but apparently he got a little bit lost, turned around. I'm not exactly sure. I slammed into his quad at full speed. Never saw him, never saw him after I, I hit. Just all that I knew was I was going full speed and immediately went blacked out. I lost video, had no idea what happened. We went over, we, we picked up the quads, we found our piece as we picked them up. My quad is right here, okay? The damage to my quad was nothing. This quad was ready to go after that sort of impact, full speed head on. If you take a look at his quad, <laughs> just, you know, do your prayers. That quad was gone. I destroyed you know, I think a flight controller, I think I destroyed the VTX, the top plate was nowhere to be found, the camera was nowhere to be found, that thing was in pieces. Now, this could have happened at a race where if my battery didn't become unplugged, I probably could have taken back off and kept flying. That wouldn't have been the case for the other quad. So that sort of durability and strength compared to something like an X Hover Vanover just goes miles towards the ability to hit something and keep going in a race, plus, you know, in my next heat, I don't have to worry about replacing that quad. It's still ready to go. So I was just super impressed that after seeing how hard I combined with that other quad, I thought I had some damage and I had nothing, not even a broken arm. 
that just really goes to tell you just how durable this thing is. Again, I slammed this thing into brick walls. I slammed this thing into concrete pillars inside the parking garage and it just kept going. I think those, those crashes, the first one I hit the pillar, it did no damage whatsoever. Um, one of the other ones, one time I hit a brick wall, I delaminated an arm, but that's it. Not talking about going 60 miles an hour right into a brick wall. So I've just been so impressed, so blown away by the durability of this frame. I love the handling of it. I love the process in building it. I love the fact that I can go to Paraflip and order it for $45 and get it to my house in two days. Just, I am super impressed with this frame. And I think that anyone looking at a racing frame to buy, you need to take a look at this frame as well. Maybe something else works better for you. There's a certain thing you can buy, but if you're not at least considering and thinking about if this is the frame you should be flying, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice at this point. So again, just want to wrap that up. I've been extremely happy. Love the way this thing flies. Love the way it handles. Love the build process. Um, I'd love to see them improve the TPU mounts a little bit. Maybe improve the battery pad. But again, those are minor things that you can handle on your own after the fact. So I just couldn't be happier. I'm loving flying this thing. It's been three or four months. Handles great. Flies great. Durability is great. It's a great frame. Highly recommend it. Hopefully you check it out. I'll include a link down below on where you can go get it. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I don't get anything from you going and clicking on it, but go ahead and click there. Go check it out, Pyroflip. If you fly this frame, let me know what you think. Do you love it as much as I do? Are the things you wish were different? What would you change about this build? And if you don't think it's for you, you don't like it, tell me know what you like instead. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Peace.